Okay, so we continue with the hot water supply system. So these are the temperature talked about. Now types of hot water supply system you have instantaneous, right? Instantaneous is something like this, you know, and the basically uh, storage is required when large quantity of hot water is desired. <coughs> For bath of course is of the order of around 22.5 liters per minute. For kitchen sink 18 liter per minute, wash basin, these are the values given, given in the code. And insulation must be this, thermal conductivity, these are also given. Heating, heating can be steam, gas or electric, anyway the steam is gone almost, you do not see them. Even gas heating is very rare, it is largely electric. Recirculation is the main thing, you know piping in hot water pipe, so hot water pipe layout principle recirculation, air let off because vapors would generate and that would create pressure, therefore there has to be venting, air let off and pressure, pressure equalization at mixed fixtures where you are mixing them, pressure equalization should be there. So SP35 figure 19 in page 88 of SP35, it gives you a hot water supply system. Uh, and it gives you some idea related to power, you know. So direct pumping uh, of this is this is a cold water supply system that has been shown and this is hot and cold water supply system. This is a, sorry this, this is a, no sorry the pneumatic, pneumatic supply system that I mentioned earlier for cold water supply system. So you have got a pressure tank compressed air pneumatic air supply system. So the earlier I mentioned this is given in the code, these diagrams are given in somewhat bigger manner, the terrace, the uh, fixture units, etc., etc., every floor this is given for tall buildings. And this is uh, another one with a, you know, uh, basically uh, two tanks at the top. So one is constant supply, another is, uh, yeah. So just like this. Now hot water supply system I was just mentioning is something like this. Now if you look at this, first of all, I have a, uh, you know, outside supply is coming something like this, right? And I might have a boiler here, okay? So cold water, cold water enters from this pumped here. And this, I mean, not pump, it is a steam actually. So this is a, showing a steam system. So the boiler generates the steam, the steam moves in this manner, and then connected here, steam comes here, heats up the water which is, which is directly coming from, you know, outside, which is coming directly from outside the bottom, right? So st steam would be heating the water, and the hot water here goes up, directly supplies through this loop and there is a kind of you know the cold, this this directly direct supply is there and there is a kind of venting should be there cold water so it does the venting is there at the cold water storage tank. So basically supply is like this the pressure is not high enough to actually supply the water to the water tank but it would be venting out because if there is an extra pressure or something this will release there. So this is obviously overflow, the cold water supply comes here and uh, this the cold water supply, you know hot water supply will have loop. So this is the, this is the basically taps, taps here and there might be cold water supply, combined supply then you might have a cold water tap here, hot water tap here. So cold water tap, hot water tap here. So hot water is something like this, this is supplied through a loop. So it starts from here, boils and then it comes down at the bottom and gets heated up. So there is a circulation all the time there in case of cold, cold, hot water supply system. This is, uh, this one is supplying water to the boiler making it steam and uh, the excess water actually, you know, this goes to again to the, I mean the steam goes out and this steam uh, basically any condensed one would be coming to this particular one, right. Uh, Okay. If you have a solar water heater system, 
it could be something like this also mixed generally you would normally be supplementing the you know so for example the supply temperature to the boiler cold feed from the this is this is from the this is from the solar heater flat plate collector let us say so the hot water because it's by thermosiphonic effect as the radiation comes into it and you have pipes so this pipes blackened pipes usually the system is there i think i'll the details of this we might may not look into in details but you have blackened pipes put in a kind of insulation and uh, they try to minimize the convection here the glass allows solar radiation to come in and trap and this heated up the air around and the pipe blackened pipe which directly receives radiation also the hot you know air surrounding it will heat up the water through this pipe which finally comes down and the supply water to the boiler is at higher temperature now instead of direct cold water supply to this so this might be you know so hot water so the here it comes supply water and this is a vent pipe actually as i said this is a vent pipe so from this one the hot water blows goes and re, you know recirculated back so that's how it is and this is your uh, primary flow this is the primary flow to the boiler basically you know the for heating purpose the steam generation purpose etc etc so cold feed is here hot feed is somewhere there this goes to the hot water supply and this is for steam generation or heating some sort of heating right and return okay so that's using coupling them with the solar heater now there are non pressure type of uh, uh, geysers which are generally domestic geysers code gives you diagrams of those and their classification as well you can look into them so this is this again hot water supply you have a vent here uh, the supply path is for example storage tank the heater the storage tank and the heater so cold water feed is somewhere there and the hot water goes like this go in this manner to different floors right and uh, there's a venting available and the circulated recirculated water comes back again to the storage tank similarly it goes along this line right and then return is there so usually hot water supply will have a complete circuit return circuit as well because otherwise the pressure would generate and somewhere you have to have a venting up there so the excess pressure created by vapors that has to be released it has to be released right so from the roof tank the cold water supply would be somewhere there these are the cold water supply the cold water supply you know and uh, hot water supply system i mean there could be uh, there could be uh, you know both both hot and cold supply could be the hot water supply system will be through the loop and cold water supply somewhere in between so that's what is the schemes are also given in the code design of water supply distribution system for hot and cold for large multi story buildings for example this is eight one zone eight story building so all pipes are coming down here some finishes there some finishes there and rest finishes there so generally around 8 story or so 8 to 9 story zoning would be there and combinations would be of the similar kind you know combinations of the similar the non pressure typically in small supply situation non pressure type of geysers are generally used so that's the that's basically related to uh, hot and cold water supply system and we can now go straight away to look into some issues for drainage drainage system right drainage system so what were you know drainage system we can you know look into the difference is essentially first in waste pipes random occurrence of short duration then surges plugs of fluid usually partially you know partially filled full not full not full running full but there are sometimes it is full and partially evacuated at times so typical diagram would look like this supposing this is a basin wash basin and you have to have a trap right water seal the idea is that no obnoxious 
gases should flow into the through the space through this control you know through this uh, through the wash basin. So, you usually you will have a trap usually you will have a trap right as the one shown is p trap. So, you will have some amount of water now the flow would be something of this kind because it is a surge like you wash basin you open suddenly there is a flow right and this flow can result in something of this kind a partial partial vacuum you know running full here in this portion full then there is a partial vacuum and again something of this kind depending upon the slope the slope is provided usually 20 millimeter per meter or something of that order because it is a gravity flow there is no pressure here wash basin is full you know it is just some water has come in and it goes like this and then it drops into the main pipes. So, ventilated stack or something of that kind where it goes right. So, the flow pattern is something of this kind and this seven this minimum seal dimension is actually specified. So, when flow takes place it should be such that you know this water seal which is there to stop the obnoxious gases or something of that kind that should not go away that should not run because there is a partial vacuum created here. So, this should not actually take it away it might go down a little bit, but then it should come back to its original position. So, these distances are sorry these distances are specified something of this kind minimum maximum distance should be this much slope and so on and so forth. So, if you look at the water flow rate on this axis versus time water flow rate increases with time comes to nearly steady value then it decreases water flow rate it is not you know it is it is not constant from any one of the waste pipes it is not constant. So, there will be so therefore, there are surges there can be plugs of flow and full and partially evacuated sometimes. So, that is the idea. So, something like this so you might this avoid this to avoid this kind of partial pressure you might vent it or it should be sufficiently large such that the partial vacuum does not pull the water back. So, one of the ways of putting a vent pipe. So, here there is a vent pipe which is connected to the atmospheric pressure. So, when there is a partial vacuum air will come from this vent pipe and balance this. So, that is the idea. So, these dimensions are also given in the code so that this will not run away this seal will not go away. So, that is the idea right. So, vents are provided in order to avoid seal going away. So, if you see typically the pressures supposing there are three wash basins of the similar kind right. So, the if you see the pressure variation the suction would be created. So, suction would be created and this suction increases somewhere at the this line like this here the suction is 0 because it is atmospheric pressure open and suction is created this gets reduced as it comes down and so on so forth. So, at the bottom there are some you know there can be even some positive pressure at the bottom as well. So, pressure variation in you know wastewater pipeline could be something like supposing three of them are flowing simultaneously then this pressure variation is given. So, this is flowing. So, there is a there is you know like there is a negative pressure and some point it would be created in the main pipeline and so on. So, traps are provided they are an apparatus apparatus where water collects the traps are provided below the friction. It would normally have a seal provided to prevent obnoxious gases from entering. The water seal can be broken by excess pressure or siphon action. So, therefore, that is to be prevented self cleansing flow to avoid deposition of solid requirement of sanitary fixture in occupancies are again given in the code. For example, this is the minimum sort of thing what should be the spacing. For example, if this is a branch for water closet the distance between minimum distances between other pipes are actually specified in both in the transverse direction. So, this is 200 mm minimum distances between two pipes coming from the same direction. So, these distances are actually specified so that there is no cross flow there is no cross flow right. So, this essentially to maintaining maintain basically hygienic condition the specifications are given and is largely empirical 
and uh, hardly anything to do, you know, not, not really calculation based or anything of that kind. Although overall sizing would be maybe of a, of a combined sewer can be based on some calculation combined sewer, sewer line of rainwater as well as uh, you know waste from domestic waste and all select the one connecting from uh, some of the houses in the campus to the you know uh, to the main pipe going to the municipal drain that may you might calculate that if it is combined then rainwater has to be also calculated but usually they are significantly over designed so they are based on experiences only largely but whatever the design issue there then we will look into also. So, this diamond space distances between different pipes different connections these are specified some of these uh, uh, sizes are also minimum specified. Basic principle is that it should be you know avoid sy siphon edges of all kind no surcharging no cross flow evaporation leakages and wind effects should be taken it should not be happening and bends and offsets should be as per the distance as specified then there can be intercepting traps that comes of course at the ground level because you know where you have like a, a, a pipe from a house connecting to the municipal main or the local main there you will be providing a intercepting you know interceptive uh, intercepting uh, men I mean joints basically or traps rainwater in soil like like the uh, trap in trap below the sink you have a trap below the sink kitchen sink it never discharges directly onto the pipe because you want to release the pressure so you have a trap where you have a mesh to, you know sort of allowing only to water to go or maybe fine materials but not really larger materials. So, even in the sink bottom you have a kind of a trap. So, the traps are these are the intercepting traps are generally provided it will equalize the pressure and you can have rainwater and soil stock separate or stack separate or they could be combined generally separate rainwater and soil stacks are separate. Some cases you have uh, in, in the in the you know the in, in states pumped and pneumatically ejected lifting etcetera the capillary actions can also be there. So, anyway the basic principles are something like this you got to avoid self sulfonage self, self and induced siphonages blowout or surcharging that cross flow has to be able, able, you know and leakages etcetera has to be avoided. Now basic idea is that drainage installation shall remove effluent quickly and quietly no no it should be noise free be be free from blockages durable and economic. So, self cleansing to have self cleansing flow no deposition this is an empirical formula available where g is the gradient given by head available and length ratio of head available by length and l is the L plus actual length plus 5, actual length plus 5. So, L e by G should be now actually H should be more, right, because you want to have the self cleansing. So, L e by G would be basically L e is L plus 5. Now, this is H by L. So, this should be, you know, this if this is 35, I mean 34, let us say, then if I want to you know if it is if H is more this would be yeah this would be less if H is higher then this would be less this would be H is higher then this would be less. So, it is suggested that this should be you know 35 square or it should be around 35 maybe lesser than this because L e into L divided by H that is what it is coming L e into H divided by L divided by H or L e into L divided by 35 square. So, H should be greater than that not less than that again it should not be too large because noise and other issues comes into picture. So, this is a guideline given to start with this is a guideline given right not in the code it is not from the code it is from some of the services book some literature in British literature you find something of similar kind. 
So that's, that's some guidelines, right? And essentially, National Building Code will look into how it calculates out. It is, you know, largely empirical, right? Largely empirical. Now, traps are water trap, flow under gravity, that's what we said. Vent pipe should be there, parallel stack is provided. A sudden flow of water through the main pipe can result in a partial vacuum that we have seen, leading to water seal breaking out. Vent pipes ensure that atmospheric pressure is maintained and vacuum is not created. Or the size of the main pipe has to be large enough so that the pressure is maintained atmospheric. So there are something called two pipe system, one pipe system and single test X system and partially ventilated system. Some of them have become actually obsolete. But anyway, let's, since the code gives you, I'll give you the definition. Somebody might use it in some innovative way. What is a two pipe system? You separate out the soil and the waste pipe separately. Separate pipe for soil and waste water and separate vents also. One pipe system is that is ventilated and connected to the sewer main. So it's one pipe. Waste water pipes are connected through traps. Of course, this is the most popular that is single stack system. So let's see diagrammatically this is given in the code. Two pipe system would look something like this. So these are the WCs and they are connected to they are connected to a separate pipe because it's two pipe system and this is vented also independently each of them are vented independently each of them are connected to the vent system right so this is this is you know this 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 separate system and this was waste water system so you have got wash basin bath etc etc and this is also vented separately this is you know this collected separately and this is vented separately so each of them are connected at the top to ensure that the seal remains they are you know they are connected separately for example from wash basin pipe there will be a connection so that you know atmospheric pressure is maintained here it's not partially evacuated at any time that's two pipe system i think this is my by and large not used most of it because it's quite uneconomic you know complete two pipe system for soil and stack so then they, there are, and but then one pipe system, you have to maintain these distances between, you know, various connections and guidelines are again given. So you have everything in single one and the single stack, but dimensions and distances between, you know, soil discharge and wastewater discharge and they are, you know, at dep depending upon, you know, like if they are in the same direction, coming from the same direction or otherwise this minimum distance to be maintained is given. For example, there shouldn't be cross flow like this. So that's what is about. So guidelines are given here. But here we use only one vent main, you know, main soil or waste pipe. So this is the main pipe and uh, this is the main vent pipe. MBP is the main vent pipe. So that's, that's the idea. And single stack system, com you know, it uses one stack but large enough. So it uses one stack large enough where discharge is again. Again, the distances are specified. Distances are specified. So single pipe acts as a bent pipe because it's sufficiently large. The pressure within it is almost atmospheric most of the time. So anywhere there's any kind of, you know, like partial vacuum, the air from here would actually ensure that, you know, that there is, there is, uh, uh, there is, um, no, no partial vacuum created. All right. So this is what it is. So National Building Code gives you this kind of diagram, these diagrams, etc., etc. So that's the idea. So I, you know, and guidelines are this is hardly anything to be done. Minimum size of these are specified, and uh, distances are specified. So it is. Look at the table, or look at the guidelines given, and just design accordingly. And this has become more by and large standardized. Now, you want to calculate out for number of them joining, then you may have to do some sort, sort of pipe sizing. For a single building, you don't have to do much. Number of them are joining. Then you calculate out the fixture units. Now, fixture units for each of them are again given. For, for you know, the, the uh, waste pipe for the wash basin or waste pipe from a bathtub. So there, it's, it's the fixture unit values are given. And then 
for fixture units peak flow in liters per minute is given through this graph. This portion of the graph is separately given in this manner. And then it says the pipe sizing is given in a table SP, SP 35. Pipe sizes are given in a table in SP 35. So, you do not have to play around much with it. It is only for similar you know, situations what is the fixture unit corresponding to the pipe sizes. And uh, rainwater drain pipes are also given in table. Now, rainwater drain pipes will come separately. So, these pipe sizes are given in table. This is the fixture unit, this is the pipe size. That is it. So, no, 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 it is not, I mean, I mean, uh, possibly, uh, possibly it is possible to model the flow system and get your pipe sizing also. But since the safety is a very, you know, hygienic safety is a major concern, it is uh, the guidelines are straight away given and therefore, uh, you, 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 you know you do not have to do any calculation or anything of that kind, simply look from table 53 of SP 35. When it comes to rainwater drain sizing which is separate, however, for, for uh, combined sewer main lines one may use, but you can see if you have, if you have by chance had a chance to peep into, into a sewer line, let us say the one going in IIT from by the hostel side because one of the one of them connects to the municipal drainage system in the uh, Gamal Abdul Nasser Mark that is your outer ring road. Now, these days what they do is they also lay uh, network cable at the top, many cables at the top of them. The pipe size will be something of the order of diameter of maybe 2 to 3 meters is highly over designed, usually highly over designed because you do not take any risk and it might be combined uh, rainwater plus, uh, yeah, yeah. So, therefore, rainy season it will have a large, might have large flow, but it is usually large over and as I said, it is typically they put it into the sewer line. You might have seen in some movies, surely you have some in some movies, it is only at the bottom there is some amount of water as it is never running full. So, there is it is highly oversized. So, therefore, sizing is not a big issue. You might use Manning's formula to calculate out with the coefficient etcetera, etcetera, but finally the values are you know the guidelines are given. So, rainwater drains, uh, how do you find it out? Supposing you want to do rainwater, again this is tables are available. Tables are given this table 57 in SP 35, it gives you rainfall intensity and the area you want to cover. Rainfall intensity that is millimeter per hour, right? So, it is essentially how much rainfall intensity is there. So, the discharge would depend upon that, and pipe sizings are is supposed to cover this much area. There is one drain here, one drain here, let us say one drain here, you know, the drain pipes taking the water. So, this sizing would depend upon uh, area as well as the rain fall intensity is there. So, the table gives you the values, again uh, no calculations, straight away the tabular values you can take. So, that is how actually we uh, do drainage you know uh, drainage and wastewater supply and all that.